the nation is remembering President George H.W. Bush today. Mr. Bush had an impressive career in public service before entering the White House. He was a two-term congressman from Texas, U.S. ambassador to the United Nations, head of the CIA, and vice president under President Ronald Reagan. Mr. Bush also lived longer than any president in American history. Kurt Smith joins me now. He was the man behind President George H.W. Bush's speeches from 1989 to 1993. He is now a senior lecturer in English at the University of Rochester. Kurt, thanks so much for joining us. How are you remembering the late president today? Well, I'm uh, remembering him uh, sadly, but also fondly and with great admiration and uh, and with gratitude for having the chance to uh, to serve, I think, uh, a great president and one who is being remembered as that uh, today and will be remembered by history as a great president and also a great man and a very dear and good friend and someone who blessed my life for a number of years. I, I worked for him, as you suggested, for four years in the White House and then had the great privilege to uh, head his speech staff on a volunteer basis for four years after he left the White House from 1983 through 1987. So I worked uh, with him and for him for eight years. And then uh, for a number of years, uh, when a speech would come up and he would want uh, some help, uh, I would be glad, obviously, to drop everything that I had to help in any way that I could. So I feel today that I've lost uh, a good friend and that America has lost a great man. And in that time, you really got to know President Bush. Is there one singular speech that you wrote with him that resonates with you and speaks to the type of leader that he was? Oh, yes. Um, George Bush was, was uh, proud of many things. His, his wife, Barbara, of 73 years, longest running marriage in presidential history, uh, his, uh, his family. Uh, he was a person of great faith, but he was particularly proud of having served in the Navy, in the military, for the uh, three years of 1942 through 44. He'd almost died at the age of 20 in uh, 1944 when his plane was shot down in the Pacific. And in uh, 1977, 1941 rather, when, uh, when he was 17 years old mm -hmm. and, Jap and the uh, uh, Pearl Harbor was attacked, mm -hmm. he had tried to uh, enlist that day, but he was too young. So he was told to come back at age 18 and enlist, and he did. But friends of his were killed that day. And so here we are, a half a century later, and the president is giving uh, a speech of anniversary at Pearl Harbor. And uh, it's an enormously emotional speech for him. Mm -hmm. And he said as much. He said, you know, Kurt, I don't want to break down. And I was working on this with him. And I didn't want him to break down. But I did want to show America the emotion and the character and the ideals and the courage and the bravery mm -hmm. that I and other members of the White House staff saw every day. Mm -hmm. And so the speech that he gave on December 7th, 1991, 50 years after Pearl Harbor, the event which drew America into World War II, was in many ways, and has been said to be, the most emotional of his, of his uh, presidency, and in many ways, the most emotional of his life. He closed by saying, the United States of America, he could barely uh, mouth the words, and then he whispered, the most wondrous land on earth. And uh, he himself has said it was the most emotional speech of his presidency. And because it meant the most to him, it meant the most to me. Wow. Uh, what an incredible story. And you can't imagine uh, what must have been going through his mind to be standing there as commander in chief, having gone through such a formative experience at the, the young age of, of 20, as you said, um, really profoundly, um, just so impactful. You've also, Kurt, spoken about the letters that George H.W. Bush has written. Why were letters so critically important to the president? Well, because it, it, he's a man of that age. Uh, he's not a, a, a man of, uh, of email. And uh, that technology, he's a man of getting the pen out and, and writing his letters and expressing his heart and expressing what meant to him. Uh, he's an introspective man and a man of poetry. Uh, he really was. He didn't show it always, but he did on the printed page. And uh, in fact, uh, we know that very personally, my wife and I, because in, uh, in 2001, when we were able, he was the former president then, but we were able to go to Ukraine, which had been freed 
in large part from uh, communist control because of the efforts of Ronald Reagan, Bush's predecessor, and Bush, mm -hmm. we were able to adopt two young children from Ukraine. And Bush found out about this. Our kids were nine months and 21 months old. When we got back to the United States, we found two uh, letters in our mailbox, and they were addressed to our young children. And it was George Bush welcoming them to the United States. And in it, he said, I used to be the president of the United States. Now I want to be your friend. That was George H. W. Bush. Wow, incredible. Uh, he had a signature way of writing his speeches. He would not allow you to use the word I. Why is that, Kurt? <laughs> because he was a man of extraordinary modesty. Here we are in a very, sadly, immodest age. And his modesty shone like a carillon in the night. Um, his mother, Dorothy, was the disciplinarian in the family. And Bush loved baseball, as do I. And at about age or eight or nine, he hit a couple of home runs and he came back to the family and he told his, mo his mother, Dorothy, boy, what a great day I had. And his mother looked at him and said, and she used the words of a great Protestant hymn to make her point. And she said, now, George, none of this how great thou art business. And George H. W. Bush, I doubt, was immodest once in his life from that time on. He would never brag, for example, ever about his war record, even though he was a bona fide hero. None of his aides, they were instructed never to brag about his, uh, his war record. Uh, or even to brag about the fact that he had a spectacular resume. And, and Elaine, you were mentioning some of the, uh, of the aspects of it. Very probably, he had the greatest resume of any person running for president ever to become president. Mm -hmm. So he taught us, I think, a great deal about how to conduct ourselves. I remember saying, and I do mean this, that he was such a spectacular father, uh, among his other traits, that if I were to become half the dad, that George Bush uh, became, I would be one happy father. Mm. Sadly, I haven't made it yet, and I may never. <laughs> I'm sure that's but if not I did, true. I'd be very happy. Well, Kurt Smith, an extraordinary figure. Um, to hear your reflections about him is so wonderful on this day. Thank you so much for taking the time to talk to us. Really appreciate it. Elaine, you're very kind. Thank you.